strategy and practices in terms of sustainability? Actually, in fact, uh, our artist company is one of the largest architectural practices around the world. We are the top number one based on the world architecture, top 100 this year. Uh, it's, it's very, very good, actually. We've got uh, 32 offices all around the world. Uh, in terms of the safety strategy, we have a policy in terms of civil design. Every single project should have the integrated and better sustainability design policy in the design cycle. So how can we achieve this one? Uh, in UK, we got a very large IDES R&D team. They will try to go into the project team to give advice during the cost of design process. In Hong Kong, we also have a very big R&D team, research and development. In that case, we try to use a, a team of the expert, in-house experts we will go to work with the designer in the day one. At first, they try to draw the drawing. We give comments already. So it, in that case, we don't need to wait until the design completes and then try to do assessment. Is that we do it in parallel with them. In that case, we think about this is can kind of save up the quality and also in terms of accessibility, can kind have of the maximum input. Uh, the major reason is that you know, 80% uh, of decision is to make wow well in the first 20% of the time. So earlier, you can really have the expert on board. In that case, you can have much more impact. So this is our company strategy and, uh, in terms of, and also the practice regarding the accessibility. Hi, thank you. Yeah. Uh, what is the most challenging part in designing and building an environmentally friendly space? <laughs> Actually, the most really challenging part is on the architect itself. Because you know, architects, they are very focusing on aesthetic, mm -hmm. how, the building, how the building should be look in terms of visually, is it have aesthetic effect? Is it beautiful enough? Is it good enough? It's very, very subjective. But however, in terms of accessibility and also of animal design, we try to measure something which is quantifiable, but it's not related to beauty. So that's a very common thing to say that a lot of the very good looking building is not green, and a lot of for green building doesn't look good. They have a different kind of perspective. So in this case, architects, how do we engage with the architect and bring the sustainability to the design process through the most challenging part? And the way to tackle this is through education, through seminar, try to invite them to have a good magazine or good uh, board. In this case, they can go there to learn by themselves. And gradually, they can pick up. And at the end, the product that we can provide with more, it looks good and also is green as well. And can you provide us a case study of a challenging project of your company have done in Asia? Oh, I think uh, one of the most challenging projects we have is um, about SRL, the Express Railway. Uh, this is a very challenging project. Uh, another one in, we have in China, we be in Japan Island, which is the whole low carbon eco island we have in the Panda, which is the Chengdu area. Uh, Chengdu area is in the center of the whole China, so that is by the mountain, it's a basin, and also this is the home for panda. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's the first time the big panda they fight in, is around that area. So uh, we are very lucky enough, uh, we got a commission from the government and also from the developer support. We are going to decide the whole island, we call it the Panda Island, uh, which is uh, aimed for low carbon, uh, still, uh, no energy, and also as a green mix with development. Mm -hmm. So yeah. did you do it already or are you... Oh, um, it's already on the drawing board for a while. We are now doing it's a master level pen and then we'll move forward to the scheme design very soon. Mm, I see. That's nice, yes. Um, how has the green building market in Asia developed in these 10 years? Yeah. Uh, at the time we mentioned about the green building, we have to do some calculation of what means a green building. In that case, we try to classify what means a green building is the one gets certified. So in that case, the more popular question to ask is that how is the green building certification scheme developed in Asia in the last 10 years? Otherwise, we just keep on talking about the building using a green color or plant something for green. But I think what uh, I would like to lay it down to green building is the one gets certified. Uh, the reason I want to propose that is because in terms of the whole green building certification process, we are not only taking care about the green part, we're taking care about the design development, we're taking care about the construction part, we're also taking care about in terms of the operation part. So that's why I think we have to fall into a green building waiting system for a building. In this case, I think uh, um, UK actually uh, is the really is the master on developing environmental design strategy. The BM is the, 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 the first green building waiting system available around the world. It's in UK, but somehow it moved along at uh, LEED, which is about USGBC, 
uh, U.S. country to propose this uh, lease system, it become worldwide recognized uh, in terms of the marketing. So that's why even though you are in Asia, a lot of the building, we so-called green building, is certified by LEED because it's an international recognized system, and also U.S. people know so much to how to do a good marketing. So LEED is one of the most marketable product in terms of the green, and then we have a green building. Uh, so recently, based on the Singapore, the BCA, we have a uh, green mark, which is very nice. It's not becoming compulsory now, so every building is supposed to be green. Uh, in Hong Kong, we have a Bean Plus we, we launched recently, and it's quite well received. And especially in China, in China, we have a building called the China Freestyle Green Building Waiting System. Not much people know about China, but actually China does develop their own green building standard at 2006. Although it's around 10 years after the U.S., but we do have a code now in here. Um, my company, IDES, is very, uh, it's my great person to convey you the news is that IDES is a corporate member of the China Green Building Council. And then myself is also the China Green Building Assessor. Um, my managing director, he is a council member in Beijing, the headquarters, one of the 70 council members to charge the aim for promoting green building in China. The last question is, as an expert in intellectual and green buildings in Asia, what do you think uh, will be a big ch change in this market in five years? Um, I think regarding to the green building development, sure, is always moving up. In terms of the general uh, building industry, I think it will go for two extremes. That means that we may suppose to face a recession soon, so a lot of people may just try to use the minimum to finish that building. Because we know that uh, when you go for a green building, uh, we have to pay, there's no free lunch. We have to upgrade the system, we have to upgrade the material, and in fact, most of the green building we're talking about two percent to even 10 percent increase in terms of the construction cost. Uh, for example, like a China, you want to achieve the China freestyle green building system based on the uh, sampling for 300 building. We're talking about 9.3 percent increase in terms of construction cost. So that's why that when we're facing this challenge, I think we go for two extremes. The one, they just use this minimum to build that building and get it done and finish it. For another, they will try to differentiate themselves with the rest of the market. So they will try to ingest a lot of resources and make become a very excellent building. So in that case, they go for the premium market. I think we'll buy the product because of this, because they got a choice. So that's why I think when the challenging come in terms of the economy industry, the people will just go for extreme. You either just keep in the lower market or you try to be in the premium market to get the premium price. Here's what I think in the coming five years. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you so much. Thank you very much.